Hey everybody, just doing a quick workbench live this evening. I'm going to be doing some painting on some diorama pieces. So if you are watching, you want to chat, feel free to chat and uh, ask me questions, all that. It's Monday, it's a uh, holiday here in Massachusetts, so I didn't have to work today, so I'm doing some crafting today. It's been nice. I'm working on a jungle diorama, so something I haven't done before. And I did some sculpting with some foam earlier today, just to make some kind of some flat stones here. I kind of paint these a little you know, black and then gray. And then I've got this uh, kind of assembly of bamboo and some fake ferns which stand up like this. I don't know if you guys can see that looking straight down at it, but yeah, the camera's not working there. Anyway, base of foam, some hot glue on some cardboard for extra stability. Basically hot glued all the bamboo sticks in here. And I left myself a cylinder. See right there at a plastic a plastic tube. And that lets me put other vegetation in here later if I want to swap it out or not. I'm going to sculpt in some either some clay or some spackle here to kind of hide all this. Um, I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to do painting right now. But uh, basically this all kind of blend into a a lump kind of a mound of of dirt or mud maybe depending on how i'm going with the floor so i got two of these got another one here so basically when it's done i'll have a kind of two portable movable pieces of vegetation that i can slide around in the scene move them take them out whatever um and uh, I think it'll come together pretty well. And then, like I said, some rocks and that sort of thing. Okay, just a stick from the yard, which I thought was kind of cool. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with paint with this yet. Might put some green on it, some moss or something. And I've got a simple half-inch foam base that I cut. Which will go for the floor. So I'm going to paint this. Paint those to match. And uh, pretty simple, but I thought I'd just run the camera while I'm doing it. And if anybody wants to pop in and say hi, feel free. And if you have any questions, if you're watching this after the live is over, leave me some questions and I will respond to the comments. I think I'm going to start with, with the rocks just because those are fun. I'm just going to do these rocks here. Oh, I forgot to texture them. I needed to get my, my texturing tool. Where is that? Some different sponges and stuff. I have an old piece of brick, which is kind of my go-to piece of rock. Another rock here. I use those for um, texturing the foam. You watch, uh, you've probably seen lots of videos on that, but um, you can use a ball of tin foil too, just something that's kind of hard and has some roughness to it and create some, some indents in the rock like that. Just so it's not perfectly smooth. Usually what I do is just kind of roll this around in my hand like this. Sometimes I'll push it into the surface of the foam create some of those more random natural looking indentations. This piece of brick has a real jagged corner here, so it actually makes some, some pretty big indents if you do that. But I'm not gonna do too much of that with this. See, like that's from the, uh, that's from this piece right here. And then when you paint it, you'll, you'll have some, uh, some different relief and texture to the uh, to the stone, which will 
hold the paint differently and you'll get different, you know, when you dry brush it, it'll, it'll bring out that, those indentations. Otherwise you just have perfectly smooth foam and it doesn't look quite natural after you paint it. So a little bit of distress to the foam helps. Now these I carved basically using my hot wire cutter earlier today. And then I used a sanding block and I just kind of smoothed it out because I want this to be a real smooth, like river washed stone. Don't want it to be too jagged, so. That's probably good enough. This is uh, extruded polystyrene foam, which you can get at any kind of uh, construction yard. I didn't realize my bamboo was in front of my face. <laughs> You can get this at Home, Home Depot or Lowe's in the States and, uh, you know, any kind of construction supply place, wherever you live. A couple of these little flat. No. Yeah, this was cut out of half-inch foam. Again, on some really kind of thin, smoothed-out rocks here. I think I will paint both sides, even though I'm intending for this to be side down. But I'll paint the whole thing. It's always fun to have extra diorama rocks laying around. So you see how smooth that is right now, compared to the one I just did. Just gives it a little bit more surface texture. Again, a lot of people do this with like a ball of tin foil. That works too. I just went outside when I a couple of years ago and found these in my yard, so that's what I've been using. It's very random. You just kind of push it in wherever you, wherever it kind of fits, and just a little bit of texture is all you need. So it doesn't look like it doesn't look like factory foam, you know. These little rocks. Just gonna be little side pieces here. So that's that's probably enough for that. So I'm gonna do a um, base coat of black paint. Let that dry, and then I will do some grays and then some lighter grays as I kind of brighten it up. I'm just using cheap acrylic craft paint. I got this at Michael's, I believe, maybe Walmart, not sure. I always go through black the most. Black paint is what I go through the fastest. And I just kind of need a big brush for this because I'm going to go kind of fast and a little messy. Put a little bit of water in there. Just watering it down so I get better coverage. Paint will flow a little bit better for this first coat. You want it to flow down inside all those cracks and indentations that we just made with the rocks. I want everything to be black. And then when we brush over it with the lighter colors, browns, grays, whatever, the black will stay down in the crevices and it will look like shadows and it just look more natural.
this diorama I am making for a friend, actually. It's the first time I've done this for somebody. I've, I, I don't sell my work usually. I mean, I never have. I've only done it for me, for my collection display. This is going to be for my friend, Jedi Hunter 83. I just did a live stream a couple nights ago. And, uh, he had asked me a month or two ago, actually, if I'd do a diorama for him. So I said I would. I don't know how to paint without getting it on my fingers. I'm not that good. I suppose I could wear gloves, but this is just acrylic, you know, craft paint, so it washes off very easily. Non toxic, anything like that. So, but inevitably, I get my fingerprint fingerprints, uh, my fingertips turn black here. So that's it. That's the base coat on this first stone. I'm just going to go over and make sure I got everything, all the little nooks and crannies. I got paint in there. Because this is the first coat, it'll dry. Um, and there will be some holidays in the in the paint. In my experience with the foam with the first coat, it takes it takes like two coats before you get like good coverage. So I'll probably have to touch this up again. But for now, I'm going to let this sit. Let's see. What can I... I need to rest it on something here. I'm just going to rest it on that stick. Yeah, there's my fingertips. Always have paper towels and water with you. I don't really care about getting messy right now. Because, again, this isn't much detail work. I had fun playing with this diorama today, setting it up. I'm just kind of thinking through it, figuring out what I was going to do. You guys will see it when it's when it's further along. I'll post uh, some pictures probably on my Instagram, and then when it's all the way done, I'll do a eventually I'll do a video of how it, you know, the full build. But today I just started with the vegetation. I was trying to figure out okay, how can I get the bamboo to stand up, and what do I want, and what size am I working with, and how much uh, flexibility do I need to have as far as placement of the vegetation and just thinking all those things, you know, trying to plan it out. Um, Cause you know, I could, I could do the base plate out of foam and just stick the bamboo right into the base plate and paint it that way. Problem with that is then you don't have any kind of um, ability to change the layout later. If you say you put different types of figures in the diorama and it just doesn't fit where the vegetation is you know, there's a number of reasons why you want to have things kind of mobile. You want to be able to move things around depending on the scene you're setting, the angle, you know, how many figures you're doing. Even like if you're taking photos, photos and you just need to tweak something, it's good to be able to have some, some flexibility with the placement of all that stuff in the scene. So I like to do loose pieces like this that I can move around. And... That's why I ended up putting the uh, bamboo into small pieces of foam, small bases. And then I, I actually had in one big one, and then I cut that in half. And uh, again, so I could move them around better. I think it's going to look good. Didn't quite get down there in the groove there. But anyway, it was fun to uh, kind of figure out the diorama, the layout. People ask me about my process, and it's usually I'm I usually start with a figure, and I don't even have the figure that uh, Jeremy wants to put in this diorama. He wants to do a predator figure, neck a predator figure in the jungle. And I don't own any NECA Predator figures. So I used a uh, oversized McFarlane Bane, which is, a, I, I think, I think the Predator figures are between eight and nine inches tall. So these Bane is kind of a placeholder. 
And that's when I realized I needed to have enough space for a figure like that. And I need to be able to move things around. So. Almost done with the base coat here. Got one more big rock to do. Going through my paint pretty well here. I'm gonna need, I might not need more paint. Get a little more water though. It's kind of a, I always used to be so anxious you know, to worry about putting too much water in the paint or too little. And you just kind of figure it out as you go. I mean, if I put like, this is too watery, I can tell right now it's gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna stick very well. See, it covers really fast. It doesn't take much to get it to move, but it's gonna be a really thin coat. And I'm gonna have to redo this rock because I just dumped too much water in the paint. Kind of get a knack for it the more you the more you do it like anything just painting rocks today for a diorama jungle diorama for predator pretty good so I'm just gonna let these these dry and wash my fingertips off a little bit get pretty messy when I'm painting. At least it's part of the fun of it. Who's watching? Hey, Wheels, how are you, man? If it bleeds, we can kill it. <laughs> uh, Wheels is down in Australia, right? What part of Australia are you in? I don't know Australia, really. I'd have to look on the map, but what are you, south, east, west, north? And Nacho GM says something in Spanish. I'm sorry, I do not speak Spanish, so do my best. Just doing some diorama stuff today, guys. I'm working on a um, something different for me, not Star Wars, it's Predator. So I'm doing a jungle scene. So I've got these uh, vegetation stations. I've got two of these, which are basically gonna be portable. So I've got some, some real bamboo, um, clippings that I cut, hot glued it into a foam base, I added some more cardboard for better stability, and then some fake ferns and vegetation. And basically I'm gonna I'm gonna sculpt this in and it'll look it'll blend into the ground. But just doing a this is about a, a 10 by 10 diorama. That's the base that I'm working with right now. And uh, those uh, those plants are gonna go in the corners kind of like this. It's gonna be two of those. And enough room for a predator figure, maybe two figures. We'll see. And I got some thoughts for how um, you can make it bigger if I need to. But that's what I'm working on right now. So I sculpted some rocks out of foam earlier today. These are going to be kind of smoothed out, river washed rocks. I just did the black base coat, and I'm going to lighten it up with some grays. And uh, but yeah, I'm kind of going off the scenes from Predator One, the movie kind of what the jungle was. I guess they filmed that in Mexico, I found out. So I will be working on that. Yeah, um, wheels. Okay, Sydney, you're in Sydney. Nice. Okay, East Coast. Yeah, you know, I would always, I would love to go to Australia someday um, just because <laughs> there's things down there that seem awesome, but such an intimidating thought to fly that far halfway around the world, you know. 
but uh, time and money and all that. But maybe someday we'll see. I have a friend who lives down in New Zealand and he moved down there, knew him as, as a kid growing up and he moved down there, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago and loves it. But anyway. Yep. If it bleeds, we can kill it. That's right. Such a good movie predator. I haven't watched the new one, the the new one that's on Hulu yet. The what's it called? Prey. I haven't seen that yet. Everybody's telling me I gotta go watch it. But I'll have to sign up for Hulu in order to do that, I guess. Do you guys get that down in Australia? Did you get um, Hulu services and American TV shows like that? All right, well, that's drying. I'm going to do something else with this base plate here. All right, I've got hot wire cutter here. It's just electric. All it does is, you know, electric current through a thin wire. And once you push the button on, it will cut through the foam pretty easy. I'm going to do a nicer edge on the, uh, on the front of this thing. mess over here all right so which edge needs a better cleanup that edge is pretty good all right so i don't know if you guys have ever seen this uh the way these things cut but this is about a 30 30 dollar purchase on amazon and right now it's powered up and i am drawing it through the foam I know it's hard to see on the camera there, but let me pull it out. The first cut I did, that flicks off. Get by the camera, where's the camera? See that edge right there? It's just with the wire. Very simple. Gives you a nice kind of, uh, I don't know, textured earthy kind of edge to the front of the diorama. So I'm just moving it slow. If you go too fast, you can break the wire. The wire is really fine. There's another section. Just left that off. See that edge? Looks pretty nice, right? It's a neat little, uh, nice, nice little finish to the front edge of this floor panel that we're gonna see. So I just keep going. This base is only about 10 inches, 10 and a half inches wide. And 10 inches deep is the size that I ended up landing on for this one. All right, almost through, going right to the corner. And there it goes. Very satisfying, fun thing to do. Very simple tool, works great. Gives you something a little different for the texture there. I like it. So I recommend a hot wire cutter like this for starting out. And there's different types, and but this one is what I've been using for a couple of years now. And it's worked okay. I, I have to replace the wire you know, every couple of months or so. It tends to, I don't know, snap on me. But that's fine. You buy extra wire. So now I have a nice edge there. I'm gonna give this a base coat of black as well, just like I did the rocks. I think I'm gonna go with a kind of a muddy brown for this base panel. Oh, wheels, okay, you said do not come now. Floods everywhere, really? Fourth flooding this year. We're okay though, backyard is a swamp, however. Yeah, I get most of the streaming stuff here, okay. Yeah, the foam cutters, yeah, exactly, yeah. Good point. If you're if you if you have one of those electric wire cutters, you don't have to use a scalpel or a razor knife, you know, and it's definitely safer. So
So I'm just going to put a nice, generous application of black paint on here, get it into all those grooves I just cut. And then when I dry brush it later, it'll look really cool. Too. I'm going to cut a little bit more the wire cutter. I'm going to do, do about six inches here too. Come on, baby. Turn on. There we go. I didn't like that paint. That paint cooled it right off. much of a sawtooth look to it right now it's kind of weird i gotta go more subtle it's all right Get this side too Yeah, I'm using acrylic paints. It's just a uh, cheap craft paint from the craft store. I don't get into any kind of fancy paint for just diorama backgrounds. Um, I'll use some of the more expensive paints for like custom figures and detail work. But for this, it's all just cheap acrylic paint. This one's called Craft Smart Acrylic Paint. Probably like a dollar or so to buy that. All right. Have you done any wheels? Have you done any diorama stuff? I forget. You do some uh, painting and anything like that for your displays? enjoy this just the simple act of painting and sculpting like this very simple it's uh relaxing for me so it's been a nice day i had, a, I had the day off from work today because it's a holiday in the u.s so did a bunch of yard work and stuff yesterday but pretty much laid low today and did some uh just kind of played around on this <laughs> saw your comment yeah so right <laughs> your experience running out of paint yeah i was running out of black i was saying like this black I, I buy i use so much black and i have run out of black several times with other colors i've had for years and you know barely touch them so fine all right 
I don't really care too much about this first coat. This is pretty sloppy, obviously. Just trying to get some coverage on there. In fact, this, yeah, this, this, this one right here is almost gone. Do a little bit of water. It's a weird thing trying to film yourself while you're painting. So sorry if it's out of shot or out of out of frame. Yeah, I haven't tried uh, flocking. You said you use flocking from the model train shops. I have a friend who's done it, and he loves it. Um, I've never tried it, so it's definitely something i got to do. So wheel that um, that other podcast Saturday night, a three POA podcast. It's good stuff, isn't it? Huh? I wasn't able to. Uh, I had to. I had to pop out right right as they were starting, so I didn't get to watch it all yet. I listened to it like another hour of it or so. But man, I love what they're talking about on there, pointing out all the overpricing and stuff from Hasbro. It's been a good show. Almost there. Yeah, I watered it down too much here, but that's all right. I'll get some other colors on there later. Clean up my mess. fingertips again. <laughs> yeah, life gets in the way. I know it's hard to, it's hard for me to listen to a full stream live. I mean, I don't have a lot of time where I'm at like two or three hours available to me. So I usually We'll pop in, listen for a little bit, and then catch the rest of it later. You know, when I'm in the car driving or something. All right, where's that leave me? A bunch of wet paint sitting here. Gotta let this stuff dry a little bit more before I, I do any more on it. Let's gonna see if there's anything else I could show you right now, but I don't know. <laughs> Got my retro Marvel Legends lizard in the mail uh, today. Looks pretty cool. I haven't opened it yet. I'm going to wait for my son's birthday and surprise him with it in a couple weeks. 
but I like those retro Spider-Man cards. They're, they're pretty nice. And what else did I pick up recently? Lately? Oh, I know what I was gonna do. I was gonna work on a um, I'm gonna do a photo with the Swamp Thing Marvel Legends creature. I don't know if you guys have seen the Werewolf by Night show on on Disney Plus, but they have a cool Halloween special on there, and they have a features the Swamp Thing monster, which is pretty cool. Hopefully, that's not a major spoiler for anybody watching this right now because it's been out for a little bit. But I'm gonna take that um, I'm gonna take that swamp thing figure i have from marvel legends and i think i'm going to do a picture with the crickness spiders it's kind of fun yeah i got this guy right here where's my there he is on camera let's see him here it's an old marvel legends build a figure from like i don't know five years ago maybe longer and I never really did anything with it. It's just been kind of sitting in the box. But it's kind of fun to see it on the show the other night. It's a cool sculpt. I could use some uh, some paint highlights and stuff. But anyway, I don't know. Look for that. On, I'm going to play around with the spiders and try to pay, take a picture, I think, later tonight. Put that on Instagram. It's just a fun idea. Monster hunters. Seventy-five bucks for Saw Guerrera. Wow. And I know the exchange rate is is you know things are more expensive for you guys, but that's that's crazy. I mean, he's thirty-two dollars and in U.S. dollars here, which and that's a high price, you know, for a deluxe. That's that's higher than we used to have to pay for a deluxe figure. And uh, yeah, I can't imagine what it's like being a collector for you guys down there. Yeah, just buy less, I imagine. Just pick and choose and only buy the things you really, really want, I guess. Which is what we should all be doing anyway. <laughs> 35 to 45 for vintage collection. Wow. Yeah. Um, I just got the vintage collection Boba Fett, actually. I found it at my Target store. Where is he? Check these guys out, huh? Got Axe Wolves and Boba Fett and Morak. Found both of them on the pegs. I couldn't believe it. I didn't have to pre order them or anything. They're actually in the store. I like this Boba Fett, the figure, the design. Um, and I like this on the Mandalorian card. Um, so I picked him up, even though I don't do a lot of you know vintage collection. But he was the most expensive I've ever seen in a vintage collection. I think he was $20.99 or something like that, which is crazy. And I think Axe was like 14 maybe 15 So that I mean, the price has been going up here too. It used, these used to be 12 bucks. you know, is what VC used to be around here. But. I did not like the Boba Fett show, so I'm not really a, a fan of the Boba Fett show itself. So I'm not buying figures from that show. Um, probably the exception would be Black Rasan if they if they do release him because he's a cool figure, but a cool character. But I do like Boba Fett in this outfit, the way he showed up in Mandalorian um, before they gave him his own show. So <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that one. And get this, these two, Costco Reeves, were on clearance yesterday for $4 each at my Target. I couldn't believe it. So uh, that's crazy, $4.19 or something. Ridiculous. Yeah, Book of Boba Fett was a dumpster fire. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys will get fat down there though i'm sure right you even up here he's a target exclusive so he's been hard to find i'm sure he's going to go quick um, 
I'd ship you one if you want, but I don't think that'd be very cost effective for you either. I, I just shipped a figure to a friend in New Zealand um, back in August and it took him, oh man, it was like almost a month and a half, I think, for it to get to him. It was gone for like three weeks. It was off the, the track and couldn't find it or anything. So I don't know. Shipping's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, if there's ever anything that I can find up here that is worth having it shipped to you, I don't mind doing that for you. Or anybody else, really. If, you know, another collector. So let me know. But you're in Sydney, though, so you should have access, I imagine, to most everything that comes out, I would hope. Well, I don't know how much more I'm going to do tonight, guys. Uh, I'll do a little bit more. I was waiting for these to dry. I could speed up the drying a little bit if I ran the, the hair dryer, but uh, that would be incredibly noisy and would not work for the stream. But I might pop in again later tonight. We'll see and do another, start doing some of the dry brushing on these. These are eventually going to be mostly gray colored rocks with some green on them. I'm kind of thinking like a muddy, muddy forest floor um, for the scene. So... You get Walmart exclusives. They go to Kmart. Target, Target is closing stores here. Huh. I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah. Who else is in the chat? Say hi if you're if you're watching. I was doing some painting and I kind of finished my base coat and I'm letting it dry right now. I'm working on a diorama for a jungle scene for Predator. But I'm kind of at a stopping point here until this paint dries a little bit better. And it's not too interesting to see right now um, what I got on the table in front of me. But these rocks are all just carved out of foam. Get the green foam here for the base plate. Yeah. Here's a little peek at my diorama process. This is kind of what I'm building, the camera right. So I kind of sketch it out, you know, um, working with my dimensions. I'm gonna have some poster board kind of on three sides and I'm going to glue, um, just print out an inkjet image from the printer of like kind of forest background, a jungle background that's gonna go there. And then this is gonna be that base piece that I just painted up in front of me. And uh, the backdrop also, if 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 he um, wants to open it up wider, he'll be able to get about, you know, open it up and take away the base plate, and you get probably a couple more figures in front of it. That's the plan right now. But yeah, I measured it out basically, just all dimensioned out, and uh, that way I know it's going to fit in the box, and I'm going to ship it in. That's what I'm working with right now. But little picture here at the little pick at the uh, little glimpse at the process in my brain. So I do plan things out a little bit when I'm doing these dios, making sure things fit. Oh, cool tip, man! Try mixing PVA glue with brown paint. Looks like mud when I tried. Yeah, that I could see that. I've never tried that before. Um, I've used PVA glue on a number of different areas but not to actually do like the ground texture before that's interesting yeah you know what i'll give that a shot why not appreciate that all right man well i'm going to sign off thanks for chatting um I'll see you around in the live streams and instagram and all that and uh i'll pop back in here when i'm Got another half hour of work to do or something. Might be later tonight. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Got work in the morning. So it's dinner time for me now. It's about 6 p.m. in the evening. Oh, wait. Hey, Nate just popped in. Hey, Nate. How you doing, man? Doing a little workbench painting. Now I can't sign off. I was just going to sign off. See? Um, 
Nate does awesome dioramas of uh, Star Wars stuff. A lot of Mandalorian and a lot of great, great stuff. Thanks for popping in to say hi. How's everything in, in New York? Enjoying this fall weather that we've got finally. It's cooling off for a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, go get dinner. Yeah, my wife's cooking. I can... I think dinner is going to be in about 15 minutes, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, we should do another uh, stream together sometime. I think we like could do this kind of thing. I've just been painting up rocks and stuff tonight, working on a, a diorama that's not Star Wars. It's going to be a Predator di diorama, a jungle in Mexico. So we'll see how that it's going to come together here. I'm, I'm having fun with it today. <clears throat> still breakfast huh yeah that's right you guys are something like 14 hours difference or something like that i can't remember but good well enjoy your breakfast all right nate yeah i'll see you later see you around and uh see you around wheels i'm gonna sign off for now but uh talk to you guys later all right bye